Don Cache. All right. It is time to get professional and start the ISCR. Let us do it. I'm going to repeat a couple things, and then we'll get into the episode, and we will have some fun. Professional Pepe, get it going. Get it going. Transition, Pepe. We talked about this last week. And welcome back to the Inside Star Citizen Review. We got our fam here. They said, we want to talk. We want our voices heard. And I agree. Some people said, we want to clean. No, we want a profession now, says Oven. That's right. So we got to have you guys here. I, I am all for that. I'm glad you guys took the vote. You guys said, I want the voices out there. When, when this hits the stream, people are watching it live. Or if it goes to YouTube and they're watching the replay, they can say, hey, I saw myself. <laughs> That's me. That's me up there with DG. And I can look at you and say, yes, you are special. You made it over here. Is somebody over here? Somebody say something right now so that I can tell you that you're special. Just all you have to do is just say something right now. Are you kidding me now? You're not going to say anything, fam? Are you kidding? They, there we go, Brixie. You are special. Whoop, special. Milk, special. Ross, special. Angel, special. Killian says no, but you are special. Captain Power, you're special. Why do I think about <laughs> Captain Planet when I see your name now, dude? Did you add the captain to it, Max? <laughs> G Dubs tell me I'm special. Thank you. Everybody here on the show live, they're amazing. You guys should hit it live. We do this every Thursday shortly after the Inside Star Citizen is announced on their official YouTube channel. Let us watch this together as a family. And let us talk about the many things that we see in it together. Let's do it. All right, I'm excited. We got an 11 minute time. I'm very happy about the 11 minutes. It is the sweet spot. It's just shy of 11 minutes. Just shy. But it's okay. I'm seeing weaponry. I'm, I'm loving the first shot. We're looking at, we're looking at a bearing. It, it, it looks beautiful. Let's see what we got. So in patch 3.11, um, we've got the bearing GP33 coming, which is uh, the first grenade launcher that we've done. Hallelujah! What excites me most about the grenade launcher is how versatile it can be. You'll be able to take this, you know, straight into a ship corridor and blow a bunch of people up in there. <laughs> yeah. You'll be able to take it out into the wide open spaces uh, yes. on planet surfaces, and if you're good enough, still be able to hit and do a bunch of damage to people. So adding new damage types or delivery systems into Star Citizen is purely uh, to link in with a long-term goal, and that goal. And that goal, okay, is going to be spoken about. But before he tells us what that goal is, this ties into the reactionary uh, mechanics we saw last week. We saw the reactions, the forced reactions from NPC. We talked about AI this morning on the stream. That'll be appearing on the channel on YouTube. So we're going through and talking about FPS and, and AI this week. And uh, last, I believe it was last week, was forced reactions uh, you guys can check it out in the playlist on the ISCR playlist. So I'm very excited. Let's hear more. Goal is to provide people with uh, as much choice as possible in the way that they like to play the game. So the grenade launcher is a very different Ooh. weapon compared to what we've got in game at the moment, uh, and therefore it will suit an entirely different style of play. Right now, oh, most of our weapons, we've either got like one end of the spectrum, which is the missile launcher, or the railgun, which are... That was like, the Animus, wasn't it? Weapons. Yeah, there's the railgun. Kind of got our more traditional oh, ballistic God. and energy weapons that fire like very fast uh, moving projectiles. So the main challenge with the grenade launcher is really getting the balance right. Um, just because yes. it is an explosive weapon, it's very easy for it to go one way or the other. If it's Could be wonky. Good or it's uh, not good enough to use, basically. So... We've compared that with a normal grenade, uh, which we've had a couple of pro bouncing problems with in the past. Like sometimes the the kill radius on that was far too yep. big, and the uh, damage radius on, on it uh, beyond that was too small. So we've actually revisited that, got that feeling a lot better, and then we based Good. this grenade launcher and the damages these um, uh, propelled grenades actually do off that. Uh, and initially they were one to one the same, and we found that it was far far too powerful because the radius on the explosion was far too big for something that you could fire so quickly and had so much ammo for so we reduced that in a little bit good they're working on things that are going to tighten up squadron 42 gameplay i'm telling you right now 
They're looking at flight mechanics. They're looking at the FPS mechanics. They're looking at everything they can to tighten up the gameplay to give us better experience because they need to get Squadron 42 out. That's why they're focusing on it. That's really what they're focusing on right now, to get everything nice and tight, packaged together for a Squadron 42 ship out. This is why we're seeing so much focus and attention being put on these types of aspects, which definitely need the love. They've been needing the love forever. We talked about this this morning. We said one of the things that we, the, we definitely need to start seeing, at least in the PU side of things, is stability. And then I, I believe it was J-Dubs or somebody in the chat had said, what's stability? I'm sorry. I don't know who said that, but I thought it was rather funny. <laughs> um, and we extended the damage radius, so you're still able to damage people. Uh, and we've got it feeling quite good. And playtests within Theaters of War has helped us tune this a lot. Um, Ooh, we've had a few playtests in the map, and it's really I like that. Kind of demonstrated uh, how on our um, shooting range we initially tune things. I'm digging and sometimes it. that's at closer ranges. Yeah. Um, so when we've actually got a much more open area to fire at people, where people are behind cover, um, they're like 50 to 100 meters to 200 meters away and you're trying to hit them with a weapon, it really starts uh, kind of like calling out the situations that people are seeing more often um, in the PU on planets especially. Um, so it's really helped us push out the, the ranges of a lot of our weapons and the grenade launchers included there. Yeah! Um, so where we're at right now... Yeah, it did sound like there's going to be some type of... Like he said, that he needs to make these weapons uh, like have a lot of variety variables to them. So like I'm hoping there's a bouncing aspect to it that would be awesome that would be now, really uh, cool the weapon is essentially fully functional um all of the feature work is done um we're still awaiting some of the content to come in like final audio final animations uh as it kind of goes through to the end of the the content pipeline what's and up dookie what's I can't up wait bob to see what the backers actually do with this thing from like 100 meter plus skill shots on people to um accidentally killing themselves uh, <laughs> trying to take a bunch of people out in corridors what's up rsw Continuing to expand the various weapon types is just one more way the content and feature teams are working to provide more player agency for star citizens by the way execute and i are talking behind the scenes we are going to start a gofundme for jared because we are joking around for a while that he was looking a little bit rugged and we wanted to pamper jared so jared if you're in here dude we're going to do that for you. We don't know if you can accept it, but we're going to talk about it. I'm trying to get uh, Execute and I are trying to get Paul from the Astro Pub on. We're talking behind the scenes on Discord to have like the three of us get together and talk about like a GoFundMe. You know, it started off as kind of like a joking thing, but like the more we talked about it, it's like we, we actually want to like show appreciation and our support to these members, especially like the community members of Cloud Imperium. I think a lot of times they don't get the love that they deserve. Like you got to imagine it's got to be difficult to deal with this community. It's got to be difficult. Not, you know, the, the, the crazy thing is it's like there's two sides to this community. You know, there's the side in game that's amazing, like super helpful. Like you get in there, you're playing the game nine out of ten. Everybody is there to help you. The the other side of that that coin is is like outside you get to like the Reddit and you know you get, you get to Spectrum and you see so much like rampant like uh uh just it, it's like a vast toxic wasteland that you you wonder like oh my god right so like I'm sure it's not easy to have a job like Jared's or anybody else dealing with the community. You know, I think he's working towards the podium. So I don't know if it's going to happen, but I'm letting you, I'm getting you a little inside scoop here that execute from Info Runners and I um, and Paul from Astro Pub were, were trying to get something together for a uh, GoFundMe. Uh, and and it's just not, I, I think it's going to be for Jared and some Cloud Imperium members. And I don't know if they can take it or not, but I think it's kind of a cool thing to do. Start off as kind of like a joke. And I think it I think it might evolve into something more. We'll see. We're trying to get this thing started. We're trying to get it started. <laughs> As they choose how to make their way through the persistent universe. And you can bet the work won't stop with either last quarter's electron weapons or the upcoming grenade launcher in Alpha 3.11. But up next, it's time for another sprint report. So let's get to it. In the first of two lighting updates this week, one of the existing challenges of our current particle lighting model is that the particles can get very, very bright depending on the lighting situation. Far brighter than they should be in real life. And that's why the graphics and VFX teams have been working together to move the existing particle lighting model closer to a physically based rendering. It's looking pretty tight. Yep. 
PBR is coming for particles too. Yes, 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 yes. That's looking pretty tight, actually. Uh, did you guys see the GT? Uh, did you guys see the uh, Nvidia conference? The the announcement on the 30, uh, 80, 30, 30, 70, 30, 80, 30, 90 series. Holy God! Did you guys see that and the ray tracing that they showed? I think we'll watch it tomorrow if I stream tomorrow. We need to actually watch that tomorrow because holy God. And I feel bad. I said, like I said this morning, I feel bad for everybody that owned a, like a 2080 because they got some serious, serious, uh, uh, they, they need a rebate. <laughs> they need a rebate because I think the cheapest end of the 30 series, the 3070 is like 400. I think that I think the 3080 is around the 700 mark. And then I think the 3090 is somewhere around the $1,500 mark, which if you think about it, we haven't seen benchmarks yet because I'm not going to say much till I see the benchmarks. And I, and if you guys know if the benchmarks are out, I'd love to see that like ASAP. Thank you, Killian. There, oh, there we go. I was pretty close. I was pretty close. Thank you so much. There's our price points on the three th on the 30 series, uh, new NVIDIA. And uh, I want to watch that with you guys tomorrow if I have the chance. But holy God. <laughs> Dutch, <laughs> we need to talk about server meshing and iCash and, and server related issues for, for 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 some of these things too. But yeah, anyway, maybe we'll watch that tomorrow. Anyhow, let's get back to this. This new systemic solution will ensure that particles are no longer brighter than the light source that hits them. And as an added bonus, will not only look better, but will save VFX artists time when they no longer have to manually balance the particle brightness in each scene because every particle will now simply work in all the various lighting situations throughout the persistent universe. Better looking and less work. Remember that. And, and when, when Jared said PBR, he's talking about physical based rendering. Okay. You guys can, can look at, I've talked about PBR before on the stream. I'm a lighting dude. It's what I do in real life. Uh, and PBR actually uh, comes into design uh, uh, mechanics uh, for, for a lot of these artists getting into uh, the, the lighting aspect of the things. I give them a lot of credit. I really do. We're gonna it's not past Blue Ribbon, no. <laughs> it's not past Blue Ribbon. <laughs> Additionally, the work of updating the day and night it's cycle looks for existing lighting zones continues Merica. with L19 Merica. and Lorville. <laughs> and a recently oh. completed sprint exploring the effort to get those massive security towers up above to search for troublemakers and security risks to Hurston's prosperity down below. It's a small touch, but it's one more way the lighting team is working to okay. give each landing zone its own distinct look and personality, not just between themselves, but within their own days and nights. Each quarter, the vehicle content team is converting more and more ships to the use of our updated hard That wasn't really necessary to me, what they're talking about. Like, I get it. It's a little kind of uh, cherry on top, but I, I don't really think that that is as necessary as some other issues that we've been talking about here on the channel. But uh, yeah, right, Killian? Right, dude. Right, 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 right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Surface shader. Now this conversion is essential to implement not only the wear and tear that will occur from the continued use of your spacecraft, but the eventual addition of new paint schemes and libraries that will bring much color to the verse. The examples right, you Ross. see here are just common development themes used for testing purposes, but we're going to keep an eye out for the paints that will reach in-game right, shops bricks. in future updates. Right, dude. Up next is Better Looking and Less Work Part 2. Now you may have heard about recent improvements to the Organics Paint Tool that looks to continue <laughs> advancing the tech our artists use to populate star citizens' planets and moons. And here we've got sample images showing the repainting of existing locations in Stanton. Now as you can see, the updated painting tool has a greater range of variation in assets and overall provides a more interesting combination between rock and brush and tree and color and everything else that can dot a planet's surface. As with previous updates, the new tool doesn't just get us a better looking brush of terrain, it's also faster and more efficient to hey, use than ever before. Important advancements necessary to finish off the planets and moons of the upcoming pyro system and beyond. Up in space, teams are finishing up work on the cargo deck exteriors ahead of their intended inclusion in the oh, upcoming okay. Alpha 311. 
Now we'll hear specifics about. I the like what that expansion how, onto the. the I why, like the way those look. In a dedicated segment here in the coming weeks. I like that. But these things just. Okay. Okay. I'm very excited because I like this. I like what this. I, I love the the art. I love the looks of this. I like the expansion on on the station right now. I'm really digging the look of this. They did a great job on this, and then. We're going to get the version one, which is going to give us the, the just the missions, like the NPC type missions. But I'm really looking forward to when we can store assets, when we can actually store some assets and there's like some longevity, there's some persistence, there's something where we feel like we're actually accomplishing something until obviously a wipe. <laughs> and that's one thing we talked about this morning and something that was um, a, a really interesting talk that we had about my experience with Dual Universe. And yes, they're two separate games, Dual Universe and Star Citizen. But in terms of like the territory uh, marker and how territory is on Dual Universe uh, versus like the beacons that are planned in and the, the people bought for land, things that can make things much more personalized for us, that give us much more feeling of 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 a, a unique feel, like a customizable kind of a feel. Morphologist uh, did a wonderful video about a, a hab that he had personally designed out of Rhino 6. I don't know if you guys saw the video, but it was a very well done video and he's talking about having like some custom uh some some type of customization features from from what we saw I believe about 2-3 weeks ago with the NPC habs that they introduced or they gave us just a little kind of like a little little touch of but didn't elaborate on. And I really don't think those are going to be for us. I really don't think those are. I mean, that's my own personal opinion i think those are going to be for npc i think when it comes to our types of uh habs we're going to see them come from the pioneer we're going to see like the the habitation modules come from pioneer again this is me speculating right now not quite sure but I would like to see some type of like customization in the forms of having a lot to choose from. They're not going to let us customize like we can in Dual Universe. They're not going to let us build, obviously. Like uh, that's not the game that that's not what Star Citizen is going to do. But I do like how they have a cool territorial based system in Dual Universe and it and a place to actually put everything. Of course, it comes with the real cool features of being able to design things too, but we had a great talk about this uh, that this morning, and of course, that'll be featured on the YouTube channel later as well. They do, uh, they so have cool. We wanted to him. squeeze a few of them in here this week. Now, not only are there multiple variations to go along with the multiple stations that are populated throughout the Stanton system, Ooh. take special note of the colored cargo containers sprinkled yes. within. Discussions are currently underway oh, now to that's, explore parity I'm very metric excited. and function with the same kinds of containers players will one day carry on their Hull series spacecraft. Excited. And while we're talking space stations, it's been a while. You didn't think we'd forgotten about docking, did you? So let's take a look now at some concepts currently being explored for ship to station docking. The team recently completed a sprint exploring potential options for extendable docking arms that can be used to allow spacecraft that are maybe a little too big to oh, fit on landing pads oh, or inside okay. hangers, safe traversal between vehicle and hangar. Now, as it's said every time we show concepts, and this will be no exception, these are explorations of idea and theme used not only to identify the direction we want to move in, but also to determine those we do not just as well. Yes. The community says yes. Larger ships with docking arms makes complete sense. Yes. What? Hold on a second. Yes. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. It is a 110% yes from the community. Continue on, Cloud Imperium. Continue on. Now, a bit beyond the normal concept is this animatic that's being used to further explore the visual intent this particular approach was going for. Now, as this bridge extends out, the idea here is to avoid something that seemed too structurally sound, while at the same time, avoiding the sense that you were merely just walking through a catwalk <laughs> okay. exposed to the void around you and could easily be knocked out by some... I got about as excited as that docking arm. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> I think that was a great analogy for what just happened in my no-no spot. <laughs> I picked up space dust. This extendable concept would also have buffer arms at the end designed to absorb impact and a second stage connecting collar to make that what? final seal to the newly arrived ship. 
It's basically a two-stage soft dock and hard seal kind of deal this concept is going for. As with most things in the Star Citizen universe, when the various other disciplines like lighting, VFX, sound, and wow. dialogue, and more come into play, it's easy to imagine how a relatively mundane task like ship docking can become a rich and cinematic experience when Okay, I'm just thinking I'm just thinking about possible design flaws or problems with this and and the only thing that I can think of is that the port has to be circular and the same size on every single larger ship that needs docking arms. Like the, you're there, like and you almost see it right there like where you can rewind and you can see at the very tippy tip <laughs> like it's circular. So all the ships are now going to have to have like a a standard uh, docking port area that's circular for the arm to dock into. It's got to be the same on every larger ship. It's the only thing I can think of that might be an issue because you're not going to be able to design a, an arm for every ship. So every single ship must then adapt to these arms. So that's going to be a bit of work on ships that are currently out that don't have these uh, docking areas, these, these, these doors, starboard and port. It looks like I don't know if some of them are going to be attached uh, top or bottom as well. But anyhow, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is really, really pretty cool. All you need is just <laughs> when all is said and done. Finally, with some time left at the end of their sprint and not content <laughs> merely with an can... impressive animatic, God bless the you. team went ahead and brought this concept mesh directly into engine to better gauge what this option might look like expanding out from an existing station while validating the distances oh. that are being discussed. What you're seeing here is the exact same thing our developers saw when they first brought this concept in and it's a uh, it's safe to say it got a lot of our team members excited about the possibilities of ship to station docking in Star Citizen's future. You can just about see the advertisements along the wall. Does Stanton have a salt lick? No? Texans will know what I'm talking about. So what did we learn about this week? Well, we learned that new weapon types like grenade launchers are about more than just <laughs> blowing people up. They're about providing more choice for players when they go into combat. That when building a game of Star Citizen size and scope, oh, it's thank you, not Killian, enough to make so tech much, that dude. just looks better. You need systems and- Killian, thank you, dude. Thank you so much, dude. That means a ton to me, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Oh, oh, sorry. Did I play that? Citizen sorry. Future. Sorry about that. About I hit the wrong the button. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Does Stanton sorry, have sorry. A solid Rewound. And I clicked the wrong no. button. Sorry. Professional. All know what I'm talking Professional. About. <laughs> so what did we learn about this week? Well, we learned that new weapon types like grenade launchers are about more than just blowing people up. They're about providing more choice for players when they go into combat. That when building a game of Star Citizen size <laughs> and scope, it's not enough to make tech that just looks better. You need systems that make work faster to go with them. <laughs> and that sometimes a concept is little more than a series of thumbnail sketches, and other times they're impressive animatics you import into engine and walk around to check the scale. They're both good. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared All right. Huffley. We'll see you next week. We got some serious value added gameplay right there. <laughs> thank you <laughs> great timing on that hammer thank you so much guys for the for the generous for the for the generosity i appreciate you guys so very much man good episode solid solid b plus verging in the a minus territory like that was a very good episode and i'm a, i'm a very harsh critic but I, I will say that that was nice to see that new value-added gameplay. 
It's, it's nice to see that. It's nice to see uh, the cargo decks developing the way that they are. It's nice to see how they're designed. Love the design of the cargo decks. I can't wait till the functionality gets to the point where I'm going to enjoy it as a trader, as an industrial uh, player. But holy gaboli, I'm telling you what, it's looking pretty good, guys. It's looking pretty nice. Ross says, launcher and lighting and paint equal fluff. Docking cargo equals solid. Yeah. Yeah. And, they, you know, they do a lot of, they. you know, here's the thing with the lighting. And this is interesting about lighting because I, I do this for a living too. But, like, lighting is so very important but so very under underestimated, uh, understated. Like, there's a lot of, there's... Uh, it, there's there's not a lot of regard to it because it's just something that happens without you noticing it. Lighting is like a feel that you get, and uh, the lighting in a game can really screw up uh, the 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 overall feel, the vibe while you're in the game. So it's important that they do get the lighting down. But I do agree at this point because there's been just so much on lighting that I do believe at this point it is kind of like fluff. No offense against the people designing, uh, you know, P get, getting into more PBR, uh, getting into, like, the, the lighting design of, of Star Citizen. I know you guys have done uh, a hell of a job. I know you guys have been working very hard. And uh, I do have to say the lighting is pretty damn good uh, in Star Citizen. So, but, yeah, like, we've just, I think we've been lighting out. I think we've all been lighting out. <laughs> This is too much lights. Lights out. You know? Like like enough with the lighting for, for a while. You know? And I think that's that's where most of us stand when we when we hear lighting or we see lighting at this point. No offense. As a dude who who's a uh, is a is a lighting guy in real life, it's terrible that I have to say that. <laughs> but it happens to me in real life too. A lot of people don't think that lighting is important, but it is actually super important. Uh, but anyway, yes, mechanics, mechanics. We were talking about AI this morning. That video will be out tomorrow. This video will be out shortly. This this stream, I will convert to a highlight and put it on YouTube like I always do. And your comments will be here for all to see that watch the video on YouTube. Guys, thanks so much for joining me here today. You guys have been absolutely brilliant. I will try and get a stream out tomorrow, but I will be talking to Bucha and doing like a uh, two-hour kind of podcast that I will eventually put on the channel for our VIPs uh, about the business model of Cloud Imperium, about revenues of Cloud Imperium, uh, about these uh, sub money and how the sub money is being used. It will be an interesting episode. I think we're on episode seven. But anyway, yeah, it is time to go. Thanks, everybody, for all the support. I had a wonderful time with you guys, and I cannot wait to hang out with you guys again. Thank you so much for being here on the ISCR, and I will see you on the next vid or stream.